بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله أما بعد. Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم he was asked what are some of the most beloved deeds to Allah سبحانه وتعالى. And the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم he said أن تدخل السرور في قلب أخيك. To place happiness into the heart of your brother. And this is something that is, you know, kind of difficult for us today because we're so concerned with ourselves being happy. We live in a very narcissistic society where it's all about me. All about my happiness. And we forget that part of our deen is to make other people feel happy and desiring our happiness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And when you look at the Prophet sallallahu with his companions, this was something that he was always engaged in, always trying to make other people feel good, make other people feel happy. I'll give you two examples. One is the example of Mu'adh ibn Jabal radiallahu ta'ala ذكر أن معاذ رضي الله تعالى عنه كان يجني لهم النخلة وهبت الريح وكشفت عن ساقيه فضحكوا الناس من دقة ساقيه فقال لهم النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم أتضحكون من دقة ساقيه قال والذي نفسي محمد بيدي إن هاتين رجلين لا أفقر في الميزان يعني عند الله يوم القيامة من جبل أحد. معاذ بن جبل رضي الله تعالى عنه was climbing up the date palm tree and the wind blew his throat his thobe and it exposed his legs. His legs was really skinny. And some of the Sahaba began to laugh at his legs. And the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said, Are you laughing at how skinny his legs are? Are you laughing at how small or how slender his legs are? He said, I swear by the one in whose hands Muhammad's soul is in, those two little legs are heavier in the scales Yom al with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala than the mountain of Uhud. SubhanAllah Can you imagine how that made Mu'ad ibn Jabal feel to hear the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa say that? Placing happiness and تدخل السرور على أخي to put happiness into the heart of your brother sometimes something as simple as saying you know brother mashallah your thobe looks very nice mashallah brother your beard is very nice or to say to the sister you know mashallah sister your hijab is nice this might be the first time she ever put a hijab on but instead we're so concerned with how wrong your hijab is sister your hijab is wrong sister you need to fix your hijab sister that is not enough you need to wear the not the overgarment that goes on the shoulders you need the one that wear over the head sister you can't wear the one that has the colors in it you have to wear black we always find something wrong with what you are doing not realizing that everybody that you come in contact with has some level of struggle in their life, some type of struggle that they are going through in their lives. And the last thing that they need is for someone like you or me to make their lives more difficult than what they have already made it for themselves. That is, that is the problem. We always find something wrong with what you're doing. Brother, stop clipping your beard. Let your beard grow, brother. Maybe he just started growing the beard. Brother, you know, you need to put this on. You need to do this like this. Everything is wrong with what you do. Nothing is right with what you do. And so instead of putting happiness into the hearts of our brothers and sisters when we meet them, we put misery into their hearts and make it more difficult for them to love Islam, make it more difficult for them to love the masjid, make it more difficult for them to love the Muslims. And when you look at how the Prophet Wasallam interacted, he made them love Islam. He made them love the Muslims. He made them love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. One more example is the example of a man by the name of Zahir ibn Huram or Haram. And the narration mentioned Kana Danimul Waj. He was a man that was not very pretty to look at. Hard on the eyes, as they say. When you look at him, you don't get a pleasant feeling. And 
from the narration we're going to see, he felt like that about himself. He felt like that about himself, that he wasn't, you know, pleasant to look at. Can you imagine what is going on in the heart and in the mind of someone who looks at themselves in the mirror every day and realizes that they are not pleasant to look at? Sometimes you'll find people who are like this, they go overboard. They overcompensate for, you know, their, you know, unsightingliness that they sometimes become more arrogant or most bo more boastful about themselves and about how they look when in fact it is due to an insecurity that they have because of how they look. So this, in, this companion, Zahir ibn Haram, كَانَ يُهْدِي إِلَى النَّبِي صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمُ He used to send gifts to the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم from the Badia, from the desert. And the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم used to say, زَاهِرْ بَادِيَتُنَا وَنَحْنُ حَادِرُهُ That Zahir is our desert man and we are his city men. You know, just making joke with, with Zahir. Zahir is my, my, my desert man. Every time I go to the desert, I always look for Zahir because that's my man. And likewise, whenever he came to the city, he would always look up the Prophet So one day he was in the marketplace. He was in the marketplace selling his merchandise. And the Prophet walked up behind him and grabbed him from the back. And he said, Man Arsilni. Who is this grabbing me? Let me go. And every time he would turn to see who it was, the Prophet would move to the right or move to the left. So he couldn't see who it was. Showing you the humanness of the Prophet ﷺ and how he used to joke with his companions. That he realized it was the Prophet grabbing him from behind. He reclined his back on the chest of the Prophet ﷺ. The Prophet ﷺ yelled out in a loud voice, من يشتري مني هذا العبد Who will buy this slave from me? And by slave he meant slave of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so Zahir, Zahir he said, Ya Rasulullah, he said, Oh, Messenger of Allah, nobody would buy me. I'm worthless goods. Look at how he looked at himself, how he viewed himself. He said, Nobody would buy me. I'm worthless goods. Cass it. I'm worthless goods. And the Prophet وسلم, said, Bell, Anta in the Lahi Ghalin. Anta less than he cassid. Bell, Anta in the Lahi Ghalin. He said, no, you are not worthless goods. He said, but to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you are ghali, you are expensive. You worth more to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Tudkhil al-surur ala akhik, to place happiness into the heart of your brother. Can you imagine how that made him feel? Wallah al sometimes we run into Muslims in the masjid, and it's their first time praying in the masjid for a long time. Then we run into Muslims First time she put on the hijab in such a long time. And our job is not to make people's lives more difficult than what it already is. Our lives is to make things easy. Our lives is centered on making things easy for other people. If it's easy for you to practice Islam, maybe it's not so easy for someone else. And your job is not to say, because it's easy for me, I suppose to, you know, it's supposed to be easy for everybody else. No, your life is to make it easy for other people. Not to make things difficult. As the Prophet وسلم, he said in ending, That you have been sent to make things easy for people and you have not been sent to make things difficult for people. And I can't emphasize this enough. You can't emphasize this enough. Everyone that you come in contact with on a daily basis has something in their lives that they're struggling with. Be easy on people. Take it easy on people and be easy as you would want Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to be easy to you. As the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, So approach people with the same character that you would like other people to approach you with. هذا وصل الله على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين وآخر دعوانا أن الحمد لله رب العالمين والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته.